Hello, this is Real World Audio, and uh, I'm going to talk about inert and live loudspeaker cabinets. And um, for those who do not have uh, time to listen to and you want to have all the information in the first 30 seconds of the video, this is for you guys. I'm cutting the chase to the last slide. So basically, we can distill it down that inert or dead cabinets they are the best when uh, when you have when the recording is made in a in a less than satisfactory room acoustics and you don't want to hear the room to reproduce those recordings inert cabinets are the best because if you have a live cabinet you are going to hear more of the crappy room component uh, where it was recorded and uh, if uh, your goal is to have as much as the room acoustics as uh, possible to have wooden tone of the instruments that is you want to listen to something like guitar or violin or or even a percussive instruments that have more complex tonality like like the indian tabla then then you need uh, uh, an active cabinet will will bring you much closer to the real authentic tonality of the instrument than a dead cabinet and uh, that's that's it that's that's the digest for for the for those who are impatient or who have uh, attention deficit issues and and those who don't i will tell more but uh, you it will be helpful if you will hear more than that because uh, this mentality that you want to hear black and white information is it better or is it worse i know now this is better then you are getting bs information because there is no such thing as better or worse or the word of audio is not black and white everything has application and there are circumstances for everything and uh, and if you know the circumstances you know the applications that's when you have real knowledge and unfortunately for that it takes a, a while to explain those things and uh, so now let's cut to the chase to my opening slide so this is my opening slide for those of you guys who are serious into audio and uh, deem to spend uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes of your life uh, to uh, to get a little bit more uh, overarching knowledge about audio and just think about it and, uh, and and try to apply it for yourselves so basically i'm calling audio broken fidelity not high fidelity because of the issues with the microphone that we have i'm going to show it in a little bit so basically there is the event that's happening that we are recording and then then there is the recording that's the recorded format of it and there is the playback and now with all of these three there are really really big issues and uh, and the issues are are such so so with the real event the issues are room acoustics and 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 that's where a concert hall versus studio recording sound comes in because i think uh, I, although this it might be just a personal preference for any music to have a uh, full value to reach its full potential as live music it needs to be played in a venue that has good room acoustics that's just as important to music as the uh, instrument itself or the person who is playing the instrument and there's another component to music which is just as important it is the audience and uh, and that's absolutely vital to have an audience while you are playing because then the music is very very different so if you talk to any musician they can tell you that uh, the audience uh, tremendously influences how they play and and it's 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 a it's a transfer of energy between the audience and the musicians and and when 
the energy of the audience adds up to the energy of the musicians the the end result is a really fantastic experience and when there is no audience then the musicians is basically it's just work it is just a show it's degraded to the level of a show and when you have a studio setting which is unfortunately becoming the standard for high fidelity today everything has to be made in a show in a studio squeaky clean uh, every parameter controlled it, it becomes to me just way too gimmicky and artificial and and of course there's a plenty of great studio recordings because there are some studio engineers who, who can work miracles just think about alan parsons for example but uh, i think when when you add true concert hall acoustics to it and then and, and you hear the recordings of, uh, of uh, classical performances perf which were real performances uh, the, 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 the quality uh, that you get from it uh, the, the feel of the instruments and everything is just on a totally different plane when we are thinking about fidelity and it's not anymore uh, overemphasizing uh, parts of the resolution or creating a world that doesn't exist in real life, but going to the theater, being at a, a, a real concert. I would say that is the high fidelity when you have the experience that you experience at a concert. Uh, to experience what the recording engineer experienced in the studio. Mm, I, yeah, I, I, the, there's a lot of debates and discussions on it, but uh, if you've ever been to a studio, they, they, they have really horrible room acoustics, truly. And then and, and they are just optimized to get the highest resolution out of uh, instruments, but to get their tonality, mm, 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 it, it's, it's not happening, unfortunately. So, so to me, anything that's done in a, in, a, in a studio and when you try to optimize your stereo system to, to work best around studio recordings, to me, that's only broken fidelity. Because, yeah, you are getting a resolution, you are getting a suspense, you are getting lots of things, but you are not getting authenticity at all. So... Let's go back talking about inert uh, and uh, live cabinets, but I will make it to a different video because uh, this is a very important message and, and by now two thirds of my audience has tuned out according to YouTube uh, uh, general accounts. So I'm going to make this another video so that the message goes out to more of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please share your ideas and, and, and just have fun listening to all your recordings, whether they are recordings of concert halls or studio. If you love them, that's fantastic. I have plenty of studio recordings, which I truly love. And uh, even though to me, they do not uh, reflect high fidelity, they just carry broken fidelity, which is still truly fantastic amazing but that's not my yardstick to measure sound quality thank you guys bye bye